Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at Squoosh that was launched in Chrome Dev Summit this year. If you haven't seen the official video yet, check out the link in the description to watch the official Chrome Dev Summit video. In this video I'm going to give you my opinion on Squoosh, so we're going to inspect Element, check the performance and check a little bit about the architecture of this app. Now if you take a look at the media coverage, most people think that this app is meant just for image compression. This is what it does, but I personally don't think this is the reason why Squoosh was built. I think Squoosh was built to show off the power of the web. Because there's so many new web technologies and your browser can do so many advanced things. And I think this is why they built Squoosh, to show off that there's a new era of mobile web apps and web apps. So let's go ahead and inspect Squoosh. In Chrome DevTools, I'm going to go to the Network tab and enable Fast 3G. I want to simulate a slow connection. And now I'm going to go to Squoosh app. I've previously visited this before, so I'm just going to hold down the reload button and then empty cache and hard reload. And then you could see here, this is on a fast 3G connection, it loads in 3 seconds and we only needed 118 kilobytes for this. So that's a nice strategy that's followed by Squoosh and I think a lot of web apps should also follow it, which is based on code splitting. You only load the JavaScript and assets that you need to show this page. And then as the user visits more page, you start requesting other assets that you need. Now I'm going to turn off network throttling. Let's go back to online. And now you could either choose an image that already exists, like here, like this one, device screen. Instead, I'm going to choose an image of our star. So let's go ahead and get Heiss. There you go. This is what Squoosh does. You have the original image on the left. And then you can do some kind of transformation on the right. So you could say, I want to convert this to WebP. And you see it's now 48 kilobytes and that's 96% smaller. And then you could drag this to see if there is a difference. Maybe you can see a difference if you scroll, if you're zoomed out, you could zoom in and see there is a tiny difference. Actually, this is quite good. You can actually ship this image and get 96% reduction which is great you could also play around with the quality so if i reduce this all the way down to 12 you see it was loading and now we could clearly see a difference and that's not a good quality image but all of this is happening in the browser there's no plugins there's no native app running all of this image compression is happening in the browser so that's really cool how does it work so let's figure out how this works let's go to the performance tab and start a new performance profiling and then i will increase to 64 See there's a loader over here and then once it's done you click on stop and there we go. Let's make this bigger and now you see this is everything that's happening over here and you could see from all of those green bars we are maintaining a good frame per second and this is why the app feels very smooth. There's only a small portion where there was jank or a missed frame. Now let's select everything again and let's see what's happening. This is on the network front. It seems they are requesting the WebP encoder, which is a WASM file. WASM stands for WebAssembly, and this allows you to run C, C++, or even Rust in your browser, and it works on all major browsers. And now let's take a look at the main thread. This is where most of the stuff normally happen. And then this is the pointer tracker. This is the tool that we use to change the quality of the, web, of the WebP file. There isn't a lot of things happening on the main thread and this is exactly why it is smooth because most of the functionality have been offloaded to a web worker. From JavaScript calling a WebAssembly function which is converting the image to WebP and all of this is happening off the main thread and this is why the app is smooth even though it's processing a lot of information. That's because the main thread is free so you could still do whatever you want in the UI. There's not going to be any congestion on it. And to show you this in a different way, I'm going to clear this and then go to the console and then with Command Shift P, I can show the performance monitor. And I'm going to show you the CPU usage alongside some other stats. So let's make this a little bit bigger. And now you will see as I interact with the app, we don't ever get like a huge spike of CPU. That's like 80%. We do get a spike in CPU because of uh, the WebAssembly call, I think, but none of this is happening on the main thread. And even if I move this along, it's just smooth most of the time. This is an excellent tool here that helps you realize that there's something slowing down your application. 
And it was also mentioned that this app works on Chrome, Firefox, Safari, and Edge. I'm on a Mac right now, so I don't have access to Edge, but let's give it a try on Safari. So this is Safari, and I can go to Squoosh. Wrong domain, Squoosh. This is a much bigger image, 6.43 megabyte, but it still works, and it's, that's amazing. Again, if I switch this to WebP, and then you will wait a little bit more because even in a native app, this will take some time. This is C or C++ code running that's actually compressing this image. We brought it from six megabytes down to one megabyte. And the best part is that this is a progressive web app. I will give you a glimpse of the future. I'm on Chrome Canary with some flags enabled. I'll show you how this will look like as a desktop PWA. So all I need to do is just click on this overflow menu and then install Squoosh and I can install it. And now I have it over here in my Chrome Canary apps. I could double click on it and then it just opens as a desktop app. You could see the app info over here because it's still important to see the URL and it's still important to see that this is over HTTPS. And then you could, you could use an image over here and it just looks like an app. And not only that, you could take a look at the dock and I can even keep in dock. If I do command tab, this is Squoosh. It looks like a different app. There's nothing special about Squoosh. It's just a PWA with a regular web app manifest. Here's a PWA I've developed and I've already installed it before. So it's simply now open in PWA workshop. And then that's it. Now it looks like an app again. And that's amazing. Now, the second best part of this being a PWA, it works offline. And what is the only way for me to show you that it works offline? Well. I took a flight to show you that this app works offline. So I took a flight to Norway to show you that if you had previously visited this web app, you can simply go to squoosh.app on your browser. And because the service worker is already installed, you'll be able to use it. So you can drag images and you, you'll be able to use all of the compressors that you previously used because they are already loaded and in the cache. You know, you can just go to the network tab and enable offline mode. So that's all for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. And next week I have a very, very interesting video. So make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be the first one to know. Ciao.